was that actually. Was the Not what was the name of your cat? The bad name? The name that nobody likes? Uh, Aria. Aria. Game of okay. Thrones. But it's not. Yeah. It's pistachio. No, it's oh, Aria. So. And what's the what's the other cat's name? Uh, it was Sheila. You did and you you renamed her to Thin Mint. It's so much better than Sheila. <laughs> I fucking love it. You know what? Everybody says that, but had you been around during my naming process, then you know I would have gone with that. But what is, you, what is a naming process for a cat? You can change it at any time. You literally no. just pick a name out of a hat and go like, oh, you'll be this name from now on. No, I actually have a thing with naming animals. Like I've always adopted, and when I would adopt whatever name they already had, I felt bad changing it, so I never changed any animal name. So, like, I had a dog named Kansas and a dog named Whippet. It. It's like, who actually named these dogs those names? <laughs> Wait, so you keep their name? Yeah, I feel bad. I mean, do you want people to change your name? <laughs> well, I'm not a dog or a cat. Like, they don't. You know what? It's not even worth the discussion because nope. no matter what, we're not going to win. It's just going to be nope. me doing a cat shotgun for 15 minutes. That's what's oh going to happen. Oh, my God. My poor cat. They loved it. Either way, though, yeah. I'm super happy um, that we actually have you. I just clicked all the buttons. We've got people coming in, which is cool. Um, I just took off my glasses, so I don't even realize my agenda. But since since we last talked, not like in person, like at the office, but like on the show, no. right? Like yeah. you, back then you were focusing on med spas, right? Massage spas. Massage spas, right? Actually, Simon corrected you in the comments. He's like, did he put med spas? But it was I, massage I, spas, yeah. I probably did put med spas. But it, but you, you know what? Me. Everybody does that. Everyone DMs me and is like, oh, I need help with med spas. I'm like, I can help you, but that's not what I think you think I know. I think that might be my <laughs> fault because I keep probably. telling you. <laughs> I really do think it is your fault, actually. It might be. But either way, so like, so you started doing these massage spas and you signed a whole franchise and yep. then it was so successful that the franchise, what happened? Oh gosh, what a long, it, okay, to shorten, short it up. Um, and okay, to shorten it. So we, I've had these locations for so many years, shit, almost, sorry, almost seven years yeah. um, or more. Oh, some oh, you think you can't say shit on a show with butts and boobs on it? Like, yes, need I, I remind you that like, you just What's rotate, up there? Yeah. right? That was my grandmother's <laughs> fruit bowl, right? Yeah. Right. No, so so yeah, these massage spas have been doing so successful for years. So to the, so there's corporate owned spas, which are not the ones that I marketed for, even though they bring me in for consultation. But and then there's the franchise location. So I had a good number of those. Um, we we got to the point where we were beating out every single one of the corporate stores um, in numbers. Literally, I one of the locations was even the top grossing in all of the nation. One um, of the absolutely killed you were it. Doing ads for. Oh yeah. Okay. And right, that, that's the one where you guys see the holiday ads masterclass and uh, the spa masterclass, absolutely killing it. Um, now the owner of the franchise ended up opening a second franchise, which is kind of like a gym, mm -hmm. but it's a gym, but it's kind of like orange theory with like a spin on it. Um, and he was hurting for funds for that franchise because he opened the business without certain funds. So he started actually like eating up locations from the spa franchise, uh -huh. uh, threatening them with lawsuits, threatening them with so many, like, I'm going to take your business. One location had been open for 10 years. And if you don't on the 10 year anniversary, the exact date, re-sign the franchise, he can literally walk in and take the entire thing, no questions asked. And he did that. And she was the second highest growing one, which is grossing a location, which is insane. So he's been like eating them all up slowly and surely. And then finally, uh, Christmas, I got the call saying we had to give up our spa. Like he took, he took it. The last ones, um, and we. I don't even know if they're still open at this point because he's like ran that franchise into the ground. Yep. To and and this holiday, this past back Friday to Christmas was our highest grossing that we had ever done in in even the past seven years. And I think that's especially why from Christmas to New Year's he came on the attack. Cause he saw the numbers. Yeah. So, um, it's better to own all the funds than 6% of the funds. Right. So, so, so the CEO, like <clears throat> the McDonald's guy behind McDonald's yeah. was like, nah, nah, yeah. nah, I'm going to, I'm going to take these back, buy them back, whatever, yeah. which opens a boatload of lawsuits. But either way that effectively means you are without client, right? Yeah. Without those clients. Yeah. I, gotcha. Yeah. I have other clients, but then, and then we had talked about how corporate would probably want to use me and so on. I said, nope. I kind of, I felt like it was my way out. Um, I felt like I loved my spas, but I think I loved the owners more. And it's those relationships I built with those owners, why I kept holding on. Because after seven years, this is why everyone who's niching down, you're going to get bored. 
um, after seven years of doing the same exact thing over and over again. And I've always gotten like that. So I used to, I've always hosted events and I would host the same events every year. You get bored and I would want to do something new or so on. So I had already gotten to my board max after like four or five years because there's no challenge there. I can make ads that work. It's, I can kill it in the holidays. I can get these locations to the highest grossing possible. So I was ready to move on, but I would have never done that to my clients. Yep. And this was like the red carpet for me to do that, which was, it, it's sad, but it's happy at the same time. So it was like the perfect yeah. exit, right? Like, yeah. Like, and I said, I wouldn't want to work with someone like that. Who's doing that to these people. Like yep. I would never. Yeah. Yeah. So like so, you yeah. literally left with your client, a brand new record. And that's like a great way to like, all right, at the end of the agency relationship, not like as a human yeah. being or like what's going on, but like, no, mm -mm. look, I took you guys to a million dollars a year. I'm done. Right. Yeah. Type of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think you and I were talking about like your big new transition. You came by, you did the whiteboard. We were like prospecting into sales engine, film attention, all that stuff. And yeah. around this time you got referred to like some dentist or something like that. Or what happened there? No. So I had already been working with, so I'd have, I've already been working with multiple franchises. Franchises are my thing. I don't know how, but it just happens, right? Um, so one of the, I had been working with two dental franchises mm -hmm. before New Year's had happened. And one dental franchise um, was the first one location test. They yeah. have a marketing department. They have chief marketing officer. They have all these marketing people in place that why do they need me? But the manager of this dental office said, hey, I used to work at the massage spa as a manager. She, Stephanie used to kill it. For our massage spas, oh. she could do the same. Yeah, it's that. See, it's it's that relationship. Nice. This is what I keep saying. The relationship. Don't burn bridges. Those gift boxes and those pizza parties, <laughs> those bunt cakes. Look nothing at nothing bunt cakes, guys. Yeah. Nothing bunt cakes wins everyone over. Um, no, but she, so she said, "Hey, I know this person. She absolutely kills it. You need to meet her. And if you like it, great. If you don't, no problem." And he actually was already spending massive amounts of money on marketing, whether he was spending $7,000 a week, I believe on the flyer. Yeah. The um, flyer, by the way, is like this like super thin, gross thing that like yeah, nobody horrible. reads, but some people still spend money on it. We don't know how that yeah. works, but yeah. Uh, but I mean, he's, he still even has it running because he, he feels like he gets a lot of business from it, which is fine. Um, and then their marketing department was running Facebook ads already. Um, but they were running Facebook ads more like branding, like mm -hmm. one liners, a photo, and then click here and it shoots them to the website. And we all know that that's crap, right? You're not capturing yeah. leads. The worst um, way to do it. The yeah. Horrible. And they were also running Google ads. So how the heck am I going to come in there and compete with that? Right. When in, anyone would kind of run, but because it's a referral and it's a relationship I have, I said, of course, I'll meet with this person. So I met with him. I showed him um, my pro the program, which is the same program you guys have. I think mine is much more beefier, which is what we'll talk about at the end of this. Um, and, and he was sold by the pure fact that they're tangible leads, right? Mm -hmm. There's a name, phone number, email there. You can tangibly count a hundred names and track the ROI on them. Right. Yeah. So he said, you know what, let's try this out for three months. And if it works great, if it does it, no harm, no foul. I'm yeah. not, you know, I'm going to lose out on uh, around 10 grand, but whatever, no biggie. Um, so we started running it. We ran it for five months actually. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the five months, um, and I actually sent you the, the screenshot numbers yesterday. Um, we had over, we had 527 leads. I'm reading it off. Yeah. 527 leads over 200. If I do the math really quick in my head, it's like over $240,000, um, in cases of people who came in, made an appointment, accepted the case. Yeah. Um, and then, a hundred and hold on, I'll get it now. A hundred and twenty of that have already started their cases. The other, the other uh, portion is getting started too. They've already accepted treatment. They just need to yeah. pick the date and start the treatment and so on. So yeah. So in five months, you know, he's made close to two hundred fifty thousand dollars spent. <laughs> you know, with my management fee, program fees, ad spend, and everything. So what was it? Seventeen thousand dollars about. Yeah. 13, 14, 15, 16, 16, 16, three and 300, whatever we'll round up. So it's 1700. So it's a no brainer, right? So yeah. then while we're in Nashville is when I get actually him and I had had a conversation before and you guys have seen Jeff Lopez's interview and Jeff's group and my group. So you understand what, 
what that partner program is. It's totally not mine, but Jeff Lopez taught us that in November. Uh, so partner. before, I, yeah. yep. So before I went to no, before I went to Nashville, I had the conversation with him. Like, hey, we've done awesome. You said that if I do awesome, you're gonna get me in more locations. I'm ready for it. Are you ready for it? And then I introduced the Power Partner program, and he's like, "Oh, wow, this is genius. This is revenue I never thought of." And he's yeah. a sale. He's a dentist, but he's a salesperson, like hardcore salesperson. Um, and so while I was gone to Nashville, is when I got the call that he met with the chief marketing officer, chief revenue officer, and chief something up other officer or whatever. Um, a, showed him the program, showed him yeah. the numbers, showed them everything, and they're like, "Okay, when you get back from Nashville, you got to meet with them." I'm like, okay, so where was it left? He's like, no, they're ready. You, they're going to sign on. You just need to meet with them. I said, well, what were the objections, right? They had to have had some objections. Like, right. ah, what's this, what's this? He's like, they had no objections. So I still didn't believe him, right? Right. And uh, he's so a salesperson. When, he's going to sell both sides, right? Yeah. No, yeah, right. Um, but I, he, he's he's a hardcore person. To, I, I find that I deal with very strong personalities very well. Yeah. Um, like all my pa pa past bosses, I even got warnings from HR before getting hired. Hey, this person's impossible to work with. Swear to God. Um, and I, we were best friends. Like, well, I can work with really difficult people. Yeah. And so I get on the phone with the chief mar marketing officer after I get back from Nashville and I let him know, yeah, I focus on this. I focus on lead generation, this program, this, you know, even though it's month to month, it's really a 12 month touch point program. And he said, you know what? It sounds great. Um, we have a board meeting next week, but then after that, let's sit down and figure out a rollout. And um, and that. So what I didn't know, and I found out during that call, was mm -hmm. that they currently work with a big agency, right. and that big agency is the one making those social media posts, those branding type Facebook ads, the Google ads, and all that. And they, he said straight out, he's like, "I'm not. We're not obviously not satisfied with the work they're doing." Right. And so I said, "Okay, well, I." I don't want to sit there and say I'm going to take over everything because that's not logical. That's not realistic. Um, I'm really, really focused on this lead generation program because it gets results. You've seen the numbers. He's like, yeah, you can't dispute those numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and then we talked about, you know, because they have over 380 locations. And we talked about, obviously, you know, I've trained this front desk. I've worked with them. They're doing a great job. How is that going to work across the nation for 300 locations? Right. So I talked about the whole program and what it's going to involve and what I'm going to do to satisfy that. And he was like, no, sounds great to me. Let's, you know, so. And I the answer to that is like, gonna... the answer to that is that conversion Academy or a client portal or something like that series of videos, right? It's more. So yeah, I'm adding on more than that. Uh, and this is where I always say, guys, just find the problem, solve it. Right. And that's essentially how the client portal came about where every time I'd get an email or I'd ask for photos, or I'd ask for certain documents, they couldn't upload it, or they couldn't send it, whatever. So I just made the client portal, and the client portal is all training videos. It's a place they can upload any documents and send to me. Send to me. Front desk has script a script generator, so it'll like write the scripts for them based on the offer. Um, but for them specifically, on top of them, on top of that, and I did do this for my massage spa clients, and I've spoken about this before. I took the franchise locations and I put them in a Facebook group, a private yeah. one, secret one. So nobody's going to find it. I own it. So you're not getting in unless I say so. And I put them all in one place. So I'm mm. going to do the same thing for them. I'm going to bring in a trainer once a week, whether it's the dentist, it's the manager, whoever it is, an expert trainer to train once a week, kind of like your lunch and learn Wednesdays. Yeah. Um, so what ends up happening, what I found, because we've had that Facebook group for the massage boss for probably four years now. And they, and not only am I the go-to marketing person in there because there's nobody else in there, but um, they end up conversing amongst themselves, each location and supporting each other. And, yep. and it's become such an asset to them that I'm going to do the same thing for them. And then I also offered, and I don't think I've ever seen any, heard anybody else do this, but this is just what I used to do back in the day. So um, applying it now is whenever I sign on a location, I'm going to send a trainer to your front desk. They're going to train your entire front desk for a Saturday um, or a weekend, whatever days you can separate from me. And I'm paying, that's on my bill. It's like part yeah. of the package program. So I will fly them out, drive them over. They'll spend the weekend, get them fully trained. And then we'll have the support of the Facebook group to continue on and on and on. Um, and then lastly, what I'm adding on that too. See, this is why like, you can't just throw up an ad. You just can't put a text message and email follow-up. You have to do more to set yourself apart. Uh, the VAs I'm bringing on board, I, Christine helped me out with that, but I was really looking for VAs that speak English and Spanish because 
you guys know and have seen, I run Spanish ads too. And if you're not running other language ads, you should as well, because they're dirt cheap. Mm -hmm. um, my VAs are going to help the front desk in answering questions, answering text messages, answering emails a lot faster than the front desk can do it. So, mm. so he, when he heard all that, he's like, oh, like you have our back. Like yeah. you're not just going to throw us to the wolves. You're, you're not just going to throw up an ad. You're not another agency that's just giving the bare minimum. Yeah. Um, but selling it as like the big thing, it's, you know, it's a whole package. And when you're signing a deal for so many locations, you kind of have to do, do the how, extra. How many locations is so many locations, Steph? So I don't, I can't imagine they're going to give me all of them. Um, uh, cause remember there's always, there's tiers of, of levels of, of shops, right? The very, yeah. very small shops, medium and large. I would assume I'd get the large for sure. And then possibly like half of the mediums. Total, they have 380. Um, <laughs> That's a $400,000 a month contract. <laughs> okay, but but being being like, because I'm very much a pessimist, skeptical person or whatever, yeah. like I we, we actually counted the numbers because I talked to my, my partner and I said, realistically, like of those 380, how many do you think I'm going to get? They were yeah. like, well, at a minimum, when you count the large ones and the certain ones, you're looking at 180. So, oh God even, forbid, 180k a month, the worst thing in the world. Oh no, it comes out to 270 without ad spend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty badass. Yo, Oops, Steph, <laughs> we're we're gonna have to hire you a full on team in like 30 days or less. Holy crap! Oh, I well, I already, I've already, I've been interviewing the past two weeks. I hired um, Aubrey. We've been working on my SOPs, recording all the videos, recording all the trainings, like hardcore the past. A week and a half and then i also decided that let's say my team is not ready by the time i need to roll people out obviously guys don't know anybody ever do this don't roll out you know 300 at a time you need to do it in waves so yeah. 10 at a time 15 at a time 30 at a time which is still a lot um i i will spend all the money that i get if i need to to just subcontract it instead i'm going to pay triple the amount of money yeah but it's worth it um to onboard properly for people who already know the programs a process because as you know i moved on to go go high level yep um and that's been also a key to selling this whole program so yeah the cool the coolest part by the way is like between you teaching my elite program the inner circle itself and like the the million dollar players that you and i know on a first name basis like there's no problem that can't be solved with money right there's really not and if you've and got I'm checks, learning that right yeah. yeah like you don't have to transform like just fucking pay people right yeah. and so like if you're writing checks, you're going to get attention from people that can definitely help you. Like, like, I don't like Nick Robbins is now talking about this guy, like Alex Sharfton, like he revolutionizes $10 million companies to $50 million companies. Like, okay, let's, let's pay him money. Oh, yeah. Nick Robbins. <laughs> no, no, I need, I need you come set up monday.com. Yo, Joel Kaplan, let's go. Robbie, let's talk. Right. Jeff Lopez, yeah. what are you doing? Right. And you can pull in an A plus team to rebuild all your SOPs, your systems, your Slack channels, your VAs, whatever you need. Like you have yeah. all the people in place. We're all just waiting for you to say go. How fun yeah. cool is that, right? I know, because in Nashville, you saw me kind of freaking out. <laughs> and you were like, Steph, don't worry. We all have your back. Like we're, yeah, like, we're all, we're all going to figure it out together. I'm like, I know, but it's just overwhelming. <laughs> like I can yell at your clients for you. Jeff Lopez knows what he's doing. Joshua Alger yeah. like does all the zaps. Christine can do all the high level. Dave Amrillo is the backup. Uh, we've got yeah. VA as a service people. You know they're them on the first name basis. Like, yeah. This is literally what the the tribe has been setting up for. Yeah, it's going to be just badass. Like, so. Which is damn cool. But I'll tell you what, we've got some bullet points to go over. And okay. this isn't just about you making a quarter no. million a month, right? Not like <laughs> You can have all the cats in the world at 250K a month. Um, right? for They're going to have their own apartment. <laughs> it's going to be exciting. For context, by the way, uh, Steph, this is her second or even third interview in the public group. She's been around since day one. She's got like 10, 15 years of experience. We met at Dan Henry's first event. Adcon two, Adcon one, something like no Adcon, Adcon two, two, two yeah. yeah. Um, I never went to one. Gotcha. Okay, so Adcon two, and she's definitely earned her keep. She's 10 to 15 years into this, so like we're throwing around big numbers, but ladies and gents, we all started at zero, right? And if you want more context, yep. watch my lunch and learn uh, two weeks ago about like freshman, sophomore, junior year. Steph is just in her senior year. No big deal, right? Yeah. Um, one of the first bullet points uh, is her process for making sure. Her Facebook ads get results each time, regardless of the industry or niche. So this is important because every Very. time I want to take on a new industry or a new niche, the first thing that pops up in my head is like, oh my God, is this going to work? And if there's yeah. a sliver of a chance of it not working, I've got full on fear, full on freeze, 
just get the hell out. I don't, the bear is going to eat me type feeling as bad as my camera is acting right now type thing, right? So how do you make sure, or what's your process on making sure that your ads get results almost without regard to the industry or niche? Yeah. And, and I think I spent, and we talked about all of the holidays, literally from like Black Friday to New Year's just coaching on or fixing everybody's ads. <laughs> Literally, I had yep. so many coaching calls, just fixing ads. And I even have one, I have one later today and then another one tomorrow, but um, I'm a data driven person, right? So I, yes, I've been in marketing for over 15 years. I know what a good ad looks like. I knew, know what a good, uh, what good targeting looks like and so on. But you have to, you have to understand that the Facebook ads platform, especially mm -hmm. after I've been in it for so many years, changes every other day yeah so you know you i may have recorded a facebook as module six months ago but guess what there's updates now which is hence why we have these facebook groups right so we can constantly upgrade up, update um so but the point is you have to change with the time so knowing that things are always going to change throwing up the same ad or throwing up the same copy that you've seen in everybody's groups and and posts and everything is not going to work Yep. Just because it worked for that guy in Utah doesn't mean it's going to work for you in New York and so on and so on. So because of that, um, I am a huge split tester and, and most of you guys who have followed my stuff knows, know that. And it's because I want the data to tell me the results. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so obviously I have a split test method, which I've actually recorded, recorded it. I had someone who had never even logged in a business manager before, knew nothing about Facebook ads, literally they fought they watched the videos they followed the process it took them even with the follow-up automation sequence three hours to do the first time it took them an hour and a half the second time because then yeah. they felt more comfortable um that was and i gave them a brand new spa location that i was like oh man if he screws this one up <laughs> like there goes my name but i was like you know what i trust my process um, and he did it and he literally got them. We had promised, I think like 20 leads that month and he had mm -hmm. gotten them 68 leads using the process. And it's, it's throwing up a split test a certain way, because I know I tell people do it this way and they still do it another way, <laughs> which is always the case. So it's, it's really throwing. Now we can do it much easier. Uh, we don't have to split test gender anymore age really, because the data will break it down for you later on, but you still have to split test creative and copy. And that's, mm -hmm. what's important. Um, and all those people who tell you, oh, video ads are converting the highest, really when was the last time you tested that? Because I'm still to this day, always split testing. Yep. Uh, in November, we went to, we had your mastermind and some people had told me, oh, have you tried creative dynamic? And have you tried convert this type of conversion ad and this type of audience? I'm like, I did a while ago, but I'm more than happy to test it again. So I spent the holidays retesting that. I'm like, nope, back to what I thought was working. But the point is I tested it. So I yeah. knew. We still weren't there yet. So you, you have to split test. The creative, I do a certain way. I always do one static image. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's like me smiling. And then a second static image that is completely opposite of the first static image. That's yeah. key, guys, because what I've seen is when I tell people to throw two static images up, they it, literally so throw yeah. a girl going like this and then a girl going like this. And I'm like, what's the difference between the two photos? So they need to be polar opposites. So like one can be of, of T smiling and the other can be a meme or memes actually convert really high, by the way, guys in ads, um, as long as it's not covered in text everywhere. Uh, but polar opposite static images, a carousel ad mm -hmm. and a video ad. And if you don't have video, it's fine. All you got to do is go on. Uh, I use Adobe spark post yep. or any kind of slideshow app. You make a quick slideshow of photos, I usually get stock videos of just like old people smiling. We're talking about dental right now. Just old people, old people smiling. smiling randomly. Well, because, just... because it's implants. So like the majority of people, I mean, there's young people missing teeth, but like the majority are older than 40. <laughs> uh, so I just get a bunch of people smiling, swinging on swings and then say, we love your smile, caring. We care about you, blah, blah, blah. And then that's your video. It yeah, doesn't right. have to be like a full of drawn out production. And, and actually I, I, the first strategy I do when I get a new client, I'll take that video, I post it on their page, I'll pin it to the top, and now I run audience, I run about 100 to $200 just to that video. Mm -hmm. um, and the, purposes of, the purpose of that is now I create a custom audience of 90% view of that video. Yeah. And that audience is what I use to create lookalike audiences, to drive traffic to. So this is all part of the retargeting um, 
<clears throat> strategy that you should be doing in a regular campaign as well, not just throwing up one ad and hoping it works. Yeah, You need to start growing your audience, engaged audience, people who engage with the page in the last 90 days. Yeah. Um, if you can't get the pixel access, then you got to make your own, you have to make your own data. So um, using all that data, using the split test of the video carousel to static, within five days, you know who's winning and you just turn off the rest. And then you can kind of duplicate the process yeah. um, and, and really put the money to what's working and what's winning. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the method. I mean, it's it's really data driven, and you just have to test. Stop copying and pasting people's uh, images. Stop copying and pasting their copy. Yeah. Like, think outside the box. Use your creativity. I do what's called competitor research. Whenever I take on a new industry or client for the first time, I spend a good two to three hours doing what I call. I know you do uh, customer research. I do competitor research. So. Yeah. I pull up five local competitors, which I ask my client, who are your local competitors? And then I pull up five big names like Amazon or like, a, for example, the business loan company, Lending Tree, Amazon Lend Business Lending, whatever. And I see what everybody's doing. That's not to say they're all doing it right. That's why we're not gonna copy them. But I see what everybody's doing. I see the common words that are being used. You read the reviews. You see that, that native language being used in the reviews. And that's how I build my copy. If you look at my notepad on my, on my computer, it's literally just sentences I've grabbed from websites, ads, yep. things, and I've like meshed them together, and then that's how I create my co copy. Just like putting what I what appealed to me as the possible consumer yeah. together, and and it's to be. That's my point. Be inspired. Don't copy. So your your Steph's secret ad making process, right? Everything's like a process, <laughs> right, or a series yeah. of steps, right? So. Uh, are you, are you like concerned about CBO, by the way? Like all the stuff you're just going to like, it doesn't change your process at all, right? No, no uh, I, thing. I spend a good amount of money in the split testing phase, which which I I tell all my clients up front about the split testing phase. Uh, it's a conversation we have to have. And I say, I'm going to spend a good chunk of your first month's budget on this. That's why I negotiate a monthly budget, guys. Don't negotiate daily budgets no. unless you want your client on top of you every single day negotiate a monthly budget, take a bit, a good chunk of that. I want to say like 200 bucks, three, if you, if you got a good budget, um, split test the five days and then narrow down your money, divide the gotcha. whatever's left in the remaining days of the month. And then you're fine. You'll be still be within your budget. So, gotcha. um, so you, you literally set up a one at the one campaign, right? One ad set. Um, yeah. but inside of that ad, so you got four different types of ads. You got two strikingly different videos or images. Yeah. You got a video and then a carousel, right? And you say, yeah. Facebook, take the wheel. You figure it out. You show it to everybody within like what your serviceable zone of like 10, 20 yeah. miles or something like that. And then you're just looking at the numbers to see which one converts best, which one has the most clicks and all this stuff. And, and then that becomes your real campaign on week two. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. And, I, and the other key is you can split test multiple campaigns. So if, if somebody's convincing me that conversion is working that week, which guys, if you follow me or you're in my Facebook group, you know I'm hardcore lead generation ads right now, um, or traffic depending on what your goal is. Um, you, can, I can, I'll also split test radius sometimes versus zip codes because I'm yeah. a huge zip code fan. Um, I always have been, especially when I work with franchises. Um, some audiences overlap, so you yep. can't do radius. You have to. Uh, every one of my locations has assigned zip codes. Yeah. Um, so that's really, and they just convert, but they get a better quality of lead, right? So. Yeah, and then after, at the end of the five days, you look at the numbers, you see, and it's not always the cheapest one, it's not always the one with the most clicks. You have to you have to follow the trail of, okay, how many click-throughs, how many leads, How I actually look to see if, how many of those actually booked appointments. Yep. So I'll look at my tracking thing and I'll see who actually came in or booked appointments within those five days. Maybe it's a different ad that I didn't think was, was gonna be, maybe it's a little more expensive, but yeah. that one actually got them to come in um, I think when we first started, I even had $2 booked appointments for dental implants, which was insane. Yep. Um, so yeah, you have to track a lot in the very beginning, but you could train a VA to do that kind of stuff if you don't want to do it or do it yourself. If you don't have that many clients, it's really not hard, but it's worth the investment of time at the very beginning. Um, I think I told this to, to somebody in your elite group the other day, like just to invest the time learning it yourself, yeah. seeing the data yourself and then let it run. Then you, you practically never have to look at it again, barely, but um, yeah, it works. So you, it works. We've, we've done it with, for the niche of like the smallest niches of niches of my students and it just, it works every time because it's data driven. Yep.
And you don't have to make the 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 hippo argument, the highest paid person's opinion discussion about like what ads are working or not, or blah blah blah. You can then be like, hey, we tried all four, and you know, like yep. your, your video that you paid five thousand dollars for is the worst <laughs> one, right? Yeah. Um, something like that. And so you're you doing this regardless of your industry or your niche. And this is how you know if your Facebook ads are going to get results because you're you're spending your dollars, you're figuring out which one's the best one, and then you go with that one, and then you've got some cool zap Google Sheet thing where it says like the campaign ID. And then it has yeah. like the number of booked appointments or something like that, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. you match, That's right. So, cool. so you could set up a zap to just label which which ad it actually came from, um, which now it shoots in a go high level for me. So, and it Perfect. attaches to the actual lead um, name and everything. So it's really easy to track. Absolutely perfect. That's so cool. Um, yeah. The next bullet point that we're going over is how she secretly turned month to month contracts. <laughs> there's you see your ty typo now? There's just you typos, just like, like, oh, this is why I'm so happy. I'm not trying to be an expert. Like, no, 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 guys. Like, I'm going to mess up two or three times a day. Just be happy. This is the smallest mess up. How yeah. she secretly turned month to month contracts into effectively year long programs. So the biggest challenge that I'm I'm seeing with people in this group and even like with Christine that we just did her zero to 20K breakdown in the IC, which is super cool. Uh, she's seeing this too. And you're seeing this too. Is that like, we'll sign a client 30 days in, they cancel. And you're like, yep. fuck, what did I do wrong? Maybe the leads weren't good enough. So you sign a new client. And you're like, the leads are amazing. They're definitely going to renew. 30 days in, they cancel. And then you're like, okay, all right. Maybe it's because the appointments or maybe it's because the sneaky survey. Maybe it's because like, there's got to be some reason. And then you, you fix it. And then it's, then they cancel again. And it's like a consistent thing. So like, I'm seeing people now saying it's a 90 day program at $5,400. Yes, you can pay month to month. Is that what you're doing? You're doing something completely different. No, completely different. So... <clears throat> Sorry, I don't think that works either. Um, if you're looking at working with people for years and years, like I have, like the massage spots for over seven years, um, you kind of have to sell them. So I don't sell them on giving them leads. Um, I sell them on, I'm giving you a contact, somebody who's interested in your business. They might or might not book that appointment now. But if we work on our remarketing campaigns for the rest of the year, that one lead that you got in January is still going to be valuable in December, November, October, September, if yeah. we have the right... Uh, marketing campaign set up. I used to do it manually before. Now with Go High Level, I can literally automate it, which is pretty badass. So what happens is um, in Go, I'll, I'm just going to speak to Go High Level because that's what I'm using right now. But um, I already have this conversation with the client where, hey, you know, we're getting the leads now in May, but we're going to retarget them come the summer and come November and so on. Um, and this is the way we're going to do it. So once the lead comes in, they either get booked appointment, no show and so on. There's campaigns for all that kind of stuff. But let's say they're going to the interested but did not book pipeline. They now go into an automated sequence, which text, text messages them a month later, say, hey, you know, I know you were interested in implants. Is the doctor just checking in again? Are you ready now? Let us know. What what can questions can we add? It's just kind of touching them again. Um, it does that at three months, it does that at six months, and then it does it at the end of the year, unless they're, unless they're moved out of it. So if they're moved yeah. out of that, then they're no longer going to get those text messages. And on top of the text messages though, this is the other key is they're getting two emails a month, kind of newsletter style and education on the product that they initially showed interest in right. for the next 12 months. That's 24 emails. And I know guys, it sounds like a lot to make 24 emails, but once you make them once, you never have to make yeah. them again. Like this is what you don't realize. All you have to do is swap out the logos for any client or company and you have the email. So either pay someone to do it for you once, it's not that expensive, or do it, it take a day to two days, do it yourself, get a VA to do it. And now we have a newsletter series, which you've even been looking at newsletters for you, for your for your students because you know that they work and they work because you're staying at, on top of my yeah exactly exactly so you're staying on the top of that that leads mind for the next 12 months at least two times a month so leads are not dead leads are not gone just because they didn't book appointment yet yeah. they have a potential to book appointment later this was also key and i just did a training in chain healers group for this about group specifically about group on and because he saw my live and they're working something similar, whatever. Um, we talk about how Groupon, Groupon leads suck. They don't convert long-term, blah, 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 whatever. And I said, absolutely. Those are bargain hunters, deal hunters. They're not going to get a membership for my spa. But what are they going to do? I have those lists now. 
And guess when the holidays come around, Black Friday yep. gift cards, holiday gift cards, New Year's gift cards. Guess who is buying an insane amount of gift cards because they are those bargain hunters. So if you're tying in all these remarketing strategies of these leads you're giving them, like one, you're making them see the future or yeah. outlook into like the end of the year, the mid of the year, not only 90 days from now. Um, and they know they can't do it without you because this is your idea and you're the one with the emails. You're the one with the the technology and the knowledge to do this. Um, and that that's why they stick around. So yeah, it's it's a ton of remarketing campaigns to existing leads you bring in, even if it's for one product. So if, for example, if I bring someone in for braces, yeah, guess what? There's parents attached to that. Now I can send the parents ads or marketing stuff for other for other products. So, so if I'm understanding <laughs> correctly, your whole angle and your narrative and your conversation with your clients is saying, let's talk about what's going to happen during your busy season, during yep. your highest volume days, during your holidays over the next six, 12 months, and yep. how we can get somebody who signed up and raised their hand coming back again and again, not just once, but yeah. three, six or nine times and not just them, mm -hmm. but their friends and their family. And yep. now that that opportunity is not just that lead but that lead and their friends and family over 11 months. Yeah. If I'm understanding correctly, that's how you're effectively getting long-term contracts, not by squeezing them into a, a contract, but by talking about bigger, longer-term automatic follow-up and remarketing. Yeah, Every, everybody is month-to-month -month with me. I do not have a contract. They're month-to-month, -month, but they stay that long for this same reason. So they're still, on, I'm not holding a gun to anyone's head. You can leave at any time. I'll refund you the last month. But when you're when you're pre-framing your potential clients' minds correctly, you'll you're good. And you know, obviously, at the end of the day, it's getting results and showing the ROI yeah. for them. And if you're doing the split test and, and ads correctly, you're going to get that. It's no doubt. Yeah. Um, and 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 it's remarketing them and also taking away any kind of error that could possibly happen. So, for example, the front desk. We always complain about how they don't call. Well, Go High Level has the forced call feature. So. Yep. We'll force call them the first day. If they put them, oh, left voicemail, guess who I'm force calling the next day? Three times in a row until they pick up. So I've eliminated that error of the front desk not calling anymore. Um, no shows. What happens when nobody, somebody no shows to your client? Your client's just probably like, oh, whatever. No, they go into another campaign, text messages, emails going out saying, hey, did you die? We're so sorry. Come back. <laughs> like, and, it, and I've actually recouped, recouped a lot of leads because of no shows. Something happened. Like yeah. the conversations even say, oh, my gosh. You know, my Uber got had a flat tire on the way and so on, blah, blah, blah. But, and, then, and it creates that. It's just like a lie, but fine. No, it Whatever. really happened. It really, because they came in and spent $29,000. So it, oh it actually God. happened. And then that woman brought in her boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, who did not sign up through my system, but that still got uh, uh, marked as a referral for me because it came in through my lead. So, and then he spent, his quote was $22,000. So they, and yeah. they both signed up. So. They both uh, uh, accepted the the campaign, so yeah. Sixty grand because of a follow up. <laughs> because That's of a no amazing. show follow up, yeah, exactly. That's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, now the, the I I think one of the bigger challenges is like like the first thirty days are really like a proof of concept, right? Like we can talk long term, we can talk about like big contracts, but like if your leads are showing up and not spending money with your client, it's going to be shaky territory no matter what, right? Yeah. But you've got like a few ticks ticks how do i even talk for a living you've got how do you write typos I ticks I don't, I don't understand how i function we right? already don't know how you function yeah i don't neither do i know. like it's but tips and tricks on how to get your clients like show up and actually like to buy from your client yeah. right because that's like the biggest challenge at least like with my bike shop i would get like one sale every two weeks like jeff is the best fucking marketing campaign in the world but like most people don't have that type of relationship with their clients spending 10 grand right so how do yeah. you get people to showing up and and ultimately buying from your client yeah. So, uh, so we briefly talked about the training that I do for the front desk. It's really important. Um, just assuming you're going to give them a script and it's going to work. Does not work that way? I wish I actually, I <laughs> it doesn't work that way. So if the client's local to me, I will drive and go do this. Um, if they're not, we'll do it over a zoom call. I literally walk all of the front desk through the leads process from beginning to end. Mm. So, because I promise you, if you go call your clients and talk to their front desk, ask them if they actually know what the ad looks like or what it says or where they're really coming from. No, they probably just think you're shooting them a name and number and they have to answer it. Yeah. I bet you that's 90% of the case. But if you actually sat down with the front desk and said, this is what the ad looks like. 
they click submit, they go through this landing page or lead generation form. They actually fill out the name, number, and email, or Facebook sometimes auto does it. Like you bring it, you dumb it down, you teach them, and then they push submit, and then they call, and then they get, I show them every single email the, the lead gets. I show them every single text message the lead yep. gets. Now they're and literally at the end of every chain, they're all, they are all like, oh, that <laughs> makes sense now. Like it's a, it's a bulb that goes off. So I will spend that initial time, train them. If I need to come back in a month or two months, cause I see it's still not working. I'll train again. Yeah. Um, I'll record, I'll record the videos and, and make sure they watch them and call me right after. Um, so that's part of it. Training the front desk. Like I told you, with this new program, I'm going to fly someone out to go train the front desk if I have to. Um, and then the other thing that's really, so once you have the, the, the front desk on your team, I also create incentives for them, mm. right? So if they do close and if they do book so many patients in that month, they get a pizza party or they get um, monetary bonuses or yeah. whatever bonus that you're willing to give. Like even something as simple as a $5 little Caesar pizza, just buy five of them. You know, that's 25 bucks, guys, off of your $2,500 uh, revenue or whatever. It's worth the money because now the front desk is on your side. So yep. they're your advocates. They're going to sell for you. Now they are they have incentive, um, even though they're at $12 an hour. The other thing I do is I do spot the first three months. I spot check a lot. I spot check their voice calls. It's really important. And this is the other key. I don't only yell at them. Like, I, I know you love yelling. I love yelling. I yell. Um, and I send the bad calls usually to the manager to then sit with them to listen and, and fix it. But I also send the good calls too. So yeah. if I hear a call that's like badass, I send it to the manager. I'm like, you guys rock. That was awesome. Yeah. And then they share it with the whole team and the whole team listens. So they're like, think of the front desk as like a little kid. You need to praise them, not just bring them down. Yeah. Um, uh, so they're going to now book a lot more appointments for you on top of that. And this was not my trick. This was a Nick Robbins trick a hundred percent. Um, we went on the cruise, the modern profits cruise in Orlando. And we were talking about no shows and all this stuff. And he said, Oh, we implemented this where once they go, once they click submit, they go into a custom audience. You take a portion of your monthly budget and now you just bombard them with retargeting ads. And, yep. and he, he did the retargeting ads different than I do, uh, because he likes to do videos and stuff like I'm not a big video advocate right now because it's just not converting as high. So what I did was, but I still took his concept and I, I went on Google I pulled all the reviews that mentioned that product, so dental implants, and I put pictures of like five stars and Google reviews or whatever, making it pretty that it was obviously about reviews, even a picture yep. of the dent the doctors or whatever. And then I quote all I did was quote the actual review at the bottom and say Cl click below to call now. And they're they're just um either tra they're either traffic or reach campaigns, but they're only going to that audience. Yeah. Uh, and actually I think it was Jeff Lopez called me the other day, say, How much are you actually spending on that? And I think I told him in the past five months, uh, I, I pulled the number. It was like $400 to retarget those leads and bombard them with like five to 10 different ads about yeah. reviews, about how awesome this office is. And the Facebook, this is funny. Facebook actually called me on, it was like two days ago. And they said, oh, we've been watching your campaigns. You might want to change this. We see that you have these campaigns running. The frequency is so high. That, that have a frequency of five to seven. And they're like, you really want to change that? I'm like, I really do not. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, but you don't understand. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I'm like, you don't understand that this is my strategy yeah. and it's getting people to actually walk through the door and spend money. Want to try again? Like Facebook yeah. is the worst. I hate when they try to educate you. Like that whole conversation with that guy was horrible because he said, you're doing this wrong. And I'm like, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was it's so horrible. <laughs> so like, so when you're doing a massive retargeting <laughs> campaign, and you're showing proof, testimonials, screenshots, five stars, and saying call now. Are yeah. you seeing people that like are actually calling from that as opposed to calling from the original ad? You are, right? Yeah. So, so the front we and this was my bad. I didn't train the front just properly in the beginning on this. They called me one day and they said we're getting all these calls because I have the whisper on on the go high level that says you have a new scope lead. Scope is my my thing or or what I'm known for, right? And so they're saying we're getting the call saying it's scope. But we look at the sh the contacts and they're not on the contacts, and that's because it's the it's it's the remarketing campaigns that people have shared out. Mm. So those leads have actually shared um, the those ads, and the button on there says call, 
So they're just going to directly call the office. So make yes, sure it, your lead <laughs> forms can be shared. Yes, that's the other key. I showed that the other day. There's a new, they changed the lead generation forms. Yep. So before you create your lead generation form at the very top, you'll see settings on the right side, click settings. The first new thing is you can, um, well, the first new thing is that where they will, aut the auto default, which I think is incorrect, um, is that they have your lead form as restricted, yep. which means that if somebody shares your lead form, they, the person that, uh, maybe sees it after the, the second touch person cannot yeah. fill it out and submit. Now, if you're doing nationwide campaigns and you don't want India and all these other places to fill out spam stuff. All right, fine. But for the most part, all of us are doing local lead generation. And if somebody is sharing my ad, it's probably because they're sharing it to their friends and family. Yeah. So I want them to fill it out. So you have to change it to open. Yeah. That's the, but, yeah. But you weren't talking about that. You meant like people are sharing your retargeting campaign, right? Yeah, but that's that's not restricted. You can that's oh, okay. easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The re the restricted part is the form. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah, yeah. it's a new thing that Facebook did, and it's actually the default is very bad, and you guys are kind of screwing yourself over if you don't change it. The second thing they did is they added languages. So before I would run Spanish ads, but then the rest of it said name, phone number, email yeah. versus nombre, teléfono, whatever. So now they changed it where you could put all the languages, and it fixes that. And then the last thing which I actually love. Um, you could put tracking parameters to that actual lead. So mm -hmm. I used to put it in Zap. So I would write in Zapier, this is an implant, this is an English. Like I'd have to write it into Zapier. Um, and it wasn't really attached to the lead. It was just attached to the Zap form. Yeah. Now if you put those parameter, kind of like think of them like tags. Now it's attached to that person's name. So wherever that name is sent to, you will always have that tag attached to them. So I put implant, braces, Spanish, English, because my follow-ups are also in Spanish or English. It's not only, you know, I'm not going to send a English follow-up to a Spanish, <laughs> Spanish so, lead. So you've effectively solved the following problems. One, uh, how to make sure your ads work before they go live by split testing. Yep. Two, how to make sure your clients want to stick around for the long term. Yep. And three, how to make sure your campaign actually gets results and people show up and buy. Yeah. It's a million it dollar business. <laughs> <laughs> like that is literally the bones of million dollar business. That's so effing cool stuff. Oh, we're working on multi-millions. <laughs> multi-million dollar business. That's true. I mean, 200K a month is like a $2 million business. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I figure now is a good time for any like Q&A or something like that. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you what, ladies and gents, mm -hmm. uh, if if you really want to like see behind the scenes and all that, I think if I can squeeze Steph, she might do a masterclass. Um, <laughs> if, if you guys are interested in, in having Steph do a masterclass where I pay her an F ton of money, to do a private zoom where like everybody like gets to see how she's doing all this stuff. Just hashtag Steph. No hashtag masterclass my face. And if we get a critical <laughs> number of people, um, I'll, I'll see if I can pay yeah. Steph for an F ton of money and her rates 10 X, but we'll figure it out, um, on yeah. doing a masterclass. So if you, if you want to get Steph to do a masterclass, just, uh, uh, masterclass my face. And then if we get enough people would be interested, but in the yeah. meantime, though, we've got some Q and a and stuff like that is okay. If we spend some time doing that. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. John Burke says, how long did it take you to set up go high level? So you and I actually had the discussion, right? So when I told you I was first transitioning, you're like, I oh, just pay someone to do it. And I knew I couldn't do that initially. Now I will. Yeah. But I knew in order for me to teach anything or do anything or explain to my clients, I need to understand every crevice fault thing that's wrong right with it uh, that I can possible. So I literally took a, a weekend. It was just a weekend. And that, and that's considered, I'm really fast with programs and learning new stuff. And I just start creating all these campaigns and playing with buttons and messing stuff up and, and figuring everything out. Um, so really over a weekend, I figured it all out. I set everything up and remember, this is the other key. I might've set everything up that weekend, but I have always been adding. Yeah. So if I see something else I could add, like, oh, the 12 month campaign, let's add that in there. Oh, the no show, let's add another text message later on again, maybe two weeks later. Or so don't think you have to have it final to get it going. You just need to get it going. Yeah, so even if you take, live. yeah, even if you just take Jeff's, you know, I think it's 10 days or seven day follow up, just put that and go high level and you'll be fine. And then you can always add on after that. Um, it's, it's really simple. And I will tell you, I struggle with moving uh, programs once I have something perfected and, and, and working, but go high level sold me for one really one feature it has, which is the force calling. So I use the, yeah, I use the force calling, I think it was like six years ago to the point where the spas created a call center 
because they could not handle the amount, the front desk couldn't handle the amount of calls coming into every location. So we created, I think it was 10 locations. There was one call center hub that all the calls for all 10 locations would go into that hub. And we had a staff of like four at a time and they would yeah. answer all the calls. And that was because of the forced calling. So that alone is gold if you're not using that. You know, the, the weirdest part is that like, the forced call feature has always been a thing. Like there's, there's one off softwares that yes. can do forced calls, but for mm -hmm. some reason, like I never thought of it. And then when, when Robin and Sean were like, like, yo, Jeff, we've been watching your lives. We think you got a solution called the forced calls. Like I'm so <laughs> in, I am so <laughs> in, but I'll it's tell cool. you what's yeah. weird about my brain is like, I look at high level and I'm like horrible at details, horrible at technical implementation. Like I'm only good at MBA strategy level stuff. Like put me in front of our crowd. I'll give a speech. Hoorah. Someone else figure out click funnels. I can't like my brain. That's hates where it, we're right? opposite. My brain hates standing on stage. I'll do master classes all day. You guys know I over deliver like massively, but like standing on stage, you know, I choke up. I, it's, I've, I have so much anxiety, but give me a program to learn it and do it. Pfft, that's easy. That's so so yeah. that's why, that's why I pay uh, high level people to set up high level for me. Yeah. Right. Cause it's like, look, yeah, I could do it, but it's going to take me like three weeks and I'm going to do it wrong. So you do it right but either process is fine like if you like like go and deep dive and like have it if you get your your confidence from knowledge of the tool then yeah. that's the right way to do it and, and i guess that's what tony tovar is about to do over this coming weekend mm -hmm. he's gonna be 48 yeah. hours like deep diving it's gonna be really really cool yeah. um moiner says on the retargeting strategy do you use the campaign as traffic lead gen form fill what objective are you doing with your retargeting strategy I want to say it's either reach or traffic. It doesn't really matter because it's going to a custom audience that's super small. Yeah. So like I just told you over over four and a half months, it, realistically, we got over 500 leads. It's only being sent to those 500 leads. So you just need to be able to push it to those 500 leads. So yeah. it does. it's not a big deal. Really. You know, I, I always got like a, a an error message saying like the audience is big enough. I don't think that's true. I think like it doesn't it, matter. It yeah. still goes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, for context, reach allows you to say, I only want to show my ad one time to each person. But it's like you, you just want to flood them. So like whether it's like reach at 10 or just traffic doesn't matter. Like just, I want to say it's traffic with and then the because the buttons are key for me. And it's I like the call business button when yeah. it comes to something like that. So the traffic allows you to do that. Perfect. Okay. So it's traffic. There you go. Uh, I Forrest, that, yeah. who does uh, dentist uh, dental ads, um, he's saying this may be too much to explain. If you do a lead ad to go high level, can you do a credit card hold for an appointment or anything like that? Um, so I have not done that in go high level yet. I was doing that um, using Cognito Forms before. Um, the other thing I did with the spas, for example, to give you a good example is we'd bring the lead in the front desk calls the lead and the script for the front desk is okay. We're confirming your appointment. We don't have this time available or we do, because I would always get request appointments. Yeah. I think one location we got over 2,500 lead booked appointments in two years, which equated to like 60 appointments booked every month for two years. Um, and the script was that they say, okay, we're ready to to book um, in order to hold your appointment we do need a credit card on file we will not charge it you have up you have up until the night before your appointment to cancel with no issues mm -hmm. um, and if it's only in case of no show we never once you say that as it we're not going to charge you it's only to hold you can cancel the day before with no issues it's not a problem they'll give you yeah. the credit card you might get like the two percent they're like i don't want my credit card on file but they probably That's weren't going to come anyways whatever. So yeah. that, so you're not sure if you can do that in high level, but you can effectively do something similar with, with the right narrative and the right texting, which is like, we'll just take your credit card and hold it to confirm and you have 24 hours to cancel or something like that. Yeah. I'm going to say something possibly inaccurate, but don't hold me to it. My assumption is that you can create that and go high level because high level integrates with Stripe. And for example, like my massage spas use Stripe. And I guess if you put the, the purchase amount at zero, Stripe will still take in that credit card information. So that's an assumption. Don't hold me to that. There, Feel free to investigate it yourself. Yeah, there's a test charge or something like that. They do a dollar and then they refund it or something like that. It, it's definitely a thing. Um, I don't think it's worth it. I think just do the script and you'll be fine. Yeah, don't let that technical implementation stop you from getting 95% no. of the way. Um, yeah. Moiner asked a question. Moiner says, on a $26 teeth cleaning, is there a fair expectation with the number of leads for a $280 ad budget? Is that the right line of thinking? Should he be thinking about this differently or what is it? So I don't, I won't work with anybody with a, 
unless you're a realtor really, but like with a budget lower than $750 a month, that's my minimum mm -hmm. because I know I can deliver anywhere from 60 to a hundred leads with that. Uh, it doesn't matter the industry. Um, I am not, and this is actually my partner, power partner said they wanted for the lower locations that we're bringing on. Oh, well, we don't have to do dental implant ads for them. We'll do teeth cleaning ads for them. And I said, no. Mm -hmm. And the reason I said no is because the money doesn't make sense. The reason why I made my client over $250,000 $250, in five months is because the lead is spending anywhere from $3,000 to $30,000. That's why it when works. That's why it works. When I'm bringing in somebody only for a $35, $25 teeth cleaning, do you know how many leads I'd have to bring in for that to actually work out? It's not worth my time and I'd rather just go for the bigger ticket stuff that it's gonna solidify my value. Because yeah. then I'm going to be working really hard to prove my value at a $25 product. And mind you, I did it for massage spas. It was a $50 massage, but I could get a shit ton of leads and there were upsells that could be done. So at the end of the day, like the lead actually would spend over a hundred dollars, which is fine. Um, but $25 cleaning, what are you going to upsell? And insurance usually pays for everything anyway. So, so it's, 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 not, not, worth it. it's not, so the problem isn't with the <laughs> budget or the number of leads. The problem is what you're offering in exchange for money. The product. Right. Mm -hmm. And chances yeah. are, and this is one of like Jeff Lopez's expert secrets. He's like, the only reason my campaigns work is because I charge $90 as the offer. And my client knows that they have to upsell to a three to five K package. If they're not doing that, this ain't going to work. Right. And that's right. the same exact mm -hmm. thing you're saying. Like, like it doesn't matter how many leads or cost per lead. It matters when that lead comes in. Is there an implication that they will be spending three to $5,000 if not? Yeah. It ain't going to work. It just ain't even the potential work, right? of the even the potential of the hundred dollars with the massage spas because even that's a low ticket offer bringing them in at fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not even about the product cost. It's about is there a possibility to upsell that number so they can add on aromatherapy, sauna, sugar foot scrub, a, a six month membership, a twelve month membership versus dental, an upsell of a cleaning. Unless you get luck out and they have a cavity or need a root canal. You're not going to get it. And when they're charging insurances, because the massage spa is not dealing with insurances, when they're charging insurances, they're getting even less money than that. Yep. So, and I know this because you guys know, like I've had, I've worked with that one dentist for shit over, sorry, over 10 years. What is, um, so what I, is the story? I don't like... know. I don't know. Um, so I know like the inner workings of his business and, oh, this is what I also did on the training the other day, talking about relationships. You need yeah. to know how that business works. If you need to ask them, hey, can I just sit behind your front desk for a day? Like, if that's going to educate you, fine, do it. It's totally worth yeah. it. I understood how the the massage spa businesses ran as if they were my own. People watch my lives and they're like, do you actually own a spa? Like, no, but I took the time to understand the business model. Same thing with dentists. I understand the business model. So now when I speak to a dentist, they understand that I'm not a marketer. They understand that I have their best interest in mind because I understand how their money works. Yeah. And you know how their money works. You're, you're solid. Very cool. <clears throat> Well, that's yeah. three o'clock on the dot. Um, okay. <laughs> I do want to say, ladies and gents, uh, if you really want Steph to do a masterclass, just hashtag masterclass my face. Steph, well, I'll do the numbers and see if it makes sense. Um, she's really under no obligation to do it. And and hell, if I can't pay her an F ton of money to share her secrets, she won't, right? Um, but Steph, it's always an absolute pleasure. I'm super glad that like you are this close right, to landing a 40, 50, 100, 300 location deal. You've got a whole yeah. team behind you of people that actually like solve your problems. Um, move you forward really darn fast. And the biggest learning that I had, by the way, from this was reiterating the fact that you need a three to 5k offer that your client can sell. If there is not an implication of a three to 5k offer ain't going to work. And, and great example is like your dentist, right? You had 500 leads show up, right? Yeah. They made $200,000, right? But what was that? Like 10 sales? Yeah. Eight, right. Uh, yeah. Well, Part, some of it was braces. So let's say less than 20. It was less right. than 20 sales. Yeah. So like, if that's the ratio, would right. you rather have 20 people paying 21 bucks or 20 yeah. people paying 10 grand, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I think that's the difference between, as I go on my journey and develop a pattern of understanding, campaigns that work and campaigns that don't, it's the offer and implication of somebody spending more money. And your ads do exactly that, which is so. And it's not only dentists, guys. So don't everyone go run to your dentist. Like there are so yeah. many industries out there with products that are very expensive. So get creative, get think outside the box and don't go to saturated markets. Uh, yeah, that's my best recommendation to you.
Perfect. <laughs> uh, we're don't hang up, but we're gonna say goodbye. Um, again, hashtag masterclass my face. And um, everyone, see you later.